All right, so here's an example shared by one of our community members. It's a free template he made available. And the idea with this template is that um, you can see there's buttons on here. I'm going to go ahead and replay this slide. So the idea is that these buttons are disabled until uh, you get your initial instructions. And once the instructions are enabled, he has some variables that uh, indicate that's been completed. And then uh, once the instructions are complete, then you can click on one of the buttons. And depending on the button you click on, when you like, let's say I clicked on two, I would go to a place where two would give me my information until I'm complete with whatever is relevant to button two. Button one and button three would be disabled. So let's go ahead and replay this. You'll hear the audio. This is a short audio file in order to test the base layer of the three button template. So at this point, I couldn't click on those buttons while that intro was happening. But now that the intro is done, I can select a button. I'm going to go ahead and select button two. When I select two, you're going to see it's going to create a visited state, so indicate that that's been visited. But the other thing is while that test audio is playing is I won't be able to click on one or three. So let's see what happens. And this audio file is a file to test layer click. two of the three button template. Now that audio is done, and now at this point I can click. So This is a short audio file. Let's go ahead and see how he built it. Now what he did was he used variables, and so he's evaluating uh, what's going on here. And uh, you can download his template and look at it. Now this is the thing with software, right? There's always a hundred ways to do things. So in this case, I went ahead and took his idea, and I modified it a little to kind of show a different way to do it. I think a way that... Uh, once you understand what you can do with Storyline, which isn't always apparent when you first get started, or when you have things like variables, then the initial approach is, hey, I need to use a variable. So let's let's look at um, what I did here. So what I did is, one is you'll notice there's only triggers from the buttons and that's it. So I don't have um, any of these start, stop variables or anything like that. So what I have is, a intro disabled buttons layer and so what happens is there's a trigger here that says show layer so this layer here uh, it'll show that layer when the timeline starts so when that timeline starts it jumps to this layer now I have this little clue or cue up here so that what will happen on the timeline is that about the four second mark that pops up to let us know the slides ending um, so that's a little visual marker for us but what happens is you come into this layer and then at this layer in the layer properties I can actually set it up to prevent user from clicking on the base layer. So that essentially disables all those buttons. So let's go ahead and look at that. So I'm going to preview this. So you'll notice and immediately my buttons are disabled. They're going to be disabled until the five second mark and now I'm back on my base layer and then you can see same thing buttons are disabled. Five seconds come up and then uh, I can click on these. So the way I set that up was I just have a starting layer where everything's disabled on the base layer. So I have a trigger here that jumps to the um, disabled buttons layer. So now all these buttons are disabled and they're disabled again because I prevent you from clicking on the base layer. And then um, after five seconds and or after the timeline's over, I have a trigger that says hide this layer when the timeline ends. So when the slides timeline ends, it jumps back to the base layer. At this point in the base layer, I can click on a button. When I click on a button, it's going to come to a layer and I have the same thing here is I have uh, prevent the user from clicking on the base layer. And so in this case, um, they can't uh, click on the other layer. So let's go ahead and look at it in full action. So what we do here is it's it's jumped to this other layer once the timeline's complete, which we see here. Now I'm on my base layer. I'm going to click on layer one. That takes me to layer one. As you can see, these are disabled because I disabled the base layer. Five seconds later, I'm back on my base layer and I can click on layer two. And then when the five seconds are up, I can click on layer three. So if we look at that, the production for this here was only about five minutes. So in five minutes, all I needed to do is really create a layer here that disabled all the buttons. So I didn't need any of those variables. And um, I have a trigger that then 
uh, ends hides this layer after the timeline's up. And then I just repeated that on the so uh, by going into your layer properties, you can prevent the user from clicking on the base layer, and that essentially disables all those buttons. This way works. Um, sometimes, you know, when we know how to use variables or we approach projects from that perspective, uh, and then we, we do this and it works. Um, but there are sometimes easier ways to do things, and which really is the power of sharing this stuff in the community because, you know, when I first got started with Storyline as well, uh, we used to build things with variables and some of our developers would show us uh, quicker ways to do that. So hopefully you can learn from this.